So 343 recently just gave us a good insight when it comes to the three new maps coming in with Halo Infinite that maps are Chasm, Cliffhanger, and Oasis. And some additional information on how Escalation Slayer is going to work in Halo Infinite because it's a little different than it was in MCC. A surprise announcement by 343 talking about an update coming with Forge in Season 3 Day 1. And we finally have some details about the narrative event coming in for Season 3 when it comes to the Battle Pass as well as how long it will last. So if you want to stay up to date with everything happening with Halo as a ramp up to the release of season three make sure you tap the subscribe make sure you also tap like as it is the best way to help with the video and channel within the all famous youtube algorithm so let's get right into those details so 343 recent release a nice little visual showcase of the three maps coming in within season three get a chance to see where different weapon placements are as well as just the general flow and geometry of these maps and i recently showcased the maps cliffhanger and chasm of the gameplay that was showcased along with escalation slayer but 343 recently we just released an entire blog about these three maps as well as escalation slayer so we have plenty of details to go through so make sure you stay tuned for the whole thing to understand well all the details. So the first map we're going to talk about here is the map Oasis, the BTB map that's coming in with season three. And they did state that it actually took some influence from one of the most popular maps ever created in Halo. That is Exile from Halo 4. They also did emphasize that there was a lot more open spaces available for vehicles to roam around in, which I really like to hear that because vehicle lanes are probably the biggest issue going on right now with BTB. Think of maps like Fragmentation and Deadlock, where you have very specific lanes where that's all you can utilize when it comes to driving a vehicle. Not a whole lot of player creativity happening there. Well, apparently with Oasis, there's a bit more freedom of movement out there, which is exactly what this game needs when it comes to BTB. And judging from the video that was showcased recently and some of the concept art that we've been seeing as well, there's a lot more open areas for vehicles to actually be able to move around however they please without being funneled down these predictable lanes. And they say that practically every space on Oasis, you can drive a Warhog through. So that's going to be very awesome to see. I'm assuming with the more interior areas, it might be a little more claustrophobic, but at least you can do it. 343 also stated that CTF is the mode that they kind of had in mind when making this map, but it does play well on other modes. And a little bit of lore behind this map is that apparently the Forerunners are terraforming the world on here, and this is like one section of it. That's why we have that one patch of green in this entire desert. Out of the three main maps, Oasis is probably the one I'm most looking forward to. As one, we desperately need some creativity and new maps when it comes to BTB maps in Halo Infinite. Now the map Cliffhanger is actually an Oni facility that's set on, well, a cliff. Now 343 stated that they wanted this map to feel a little different, but also similar at the same time when it comes to the art style, as it is going to be another human themed map, which we have plenty of those, but we're also going to see this one being a little different because it's going to be an Oni base. So it kind of allows itself to have much more interest in geometry for a human style map. But 343 did state that there is a subtle forerunner element to the map as well. I find that rather interesting because in the gameplay that was showcased of Cliffhanger, we saw areas of the map that were lit up red, like a, like a hologram or something. We saw it in the skybox and on the map itself. So that's either like Eratus, like affecting the simulation that we we're in when it comes to Spartan training, or maybe it's like some corrupted technology of the Forerunners. We don't really know until we actually get into it. Now Cliffhanger is looking to be a much more objective focused map rather than like Slayer or anything else. They stated specifically that this map was designed with zone control modes in mind, so things like Strongholds and King of the Hill will most likely play out the best. And the fact how they kind of zoned out the map in particular ways where each section feels and plays a little different and also cutting off different lines of sight. So say if you're capturing a stronghold, you're not getting sniped all the way from B or A. While visually this map does look really awesome, I'm excited to play on it. Though, like I said, I'm much more of a ranked competitive fan when it comes to 4v4 Halo. This should be all right. I mean, it's a great addition. I'm looking forward to playing on it. I did see that the main power weapon that's on this map is a sniper rifle, and it looks to be a man cannon that kind of shoots you across the entirety of the map, which is always kind of fun to take. So that kind of makes me wonder if there's maybe like some overpowered lines of sight that kind of just really helps you pop off. Cause you know, sometimes Halo maps have like those spots or like montage spots of, in a way, maybe it'll be like that in Cliffhanger. Now I'm sure the gameplay that we saw of this map during the HTS event wasn't like a true representation cause they were playing Escalation Slayer. And I'm assuming most of the content creators were probably playing rather casually, just kind of jumping into the middle of everything and blowing each other up. But trust me, once we get some hands-on experience with this map, I'll let you guys know how it is on the channel here. Now, the last map on the list is Chasm. They actually stated that this one, the team really pushed really hard to get into season three. This seemed to be a bit of a late addition as every leak that we've reported on when it comes to content coming in for season three, they didn't really state Chasm, but they kind of stated that it was in there 
it was being worked on but weren't sure if it was gonna be a season three or a season four map so it seems like they kind of squeezed it in last minute they got chasm ready to go they actually say the origin of what created this map because this is very different from all the other kind of map formats that we have right now in halo infinite which are very focused on three lane formats kind of like you would see in your traditional map design pretty much every shooter out there because the original inspiration of chasm actually came from the campaign and that really does come through in the art style as well developer said he was playing network co-op and he was like well this actually would be kind of a fun area to play around with when it comes to multiplayer let me try to play around with a little bit to see what i can come up with and well what they came up with was some pretty fun stuff you can see the inspiration really did come from the campaign is like i would be shocked if this wasn't just a straight rip from some section or some parts like pushed together in some way we do see some of the back alleyway ways on the map that are just straight up ripped from the campaign put into this multiplayer map and from the hgs gameplay that we saw they played ctf on it and with social settings and some of the hgs content creators jen aka lady kidna if you don't follow her make sure you do stated that the map kind of plays very similar to say like a boarding action from combat evolved which is really unique very much more sorted to like party game kind of stuff though you do have platforms you can use to walk across to one side to another unlike boarding action which only has teleporters but after watching the gameplay i totally do get that vibe but you also do have these floating structures which you can kind of use like grapple on which grapples can be on the map or just kind of clamber on as well there are two snipers on the map as well as camo so it's going to be a pretty interesting sandbox i think this will be a good party map i don't really expect this to be a solid team slayer type of map where you're trying to go for the hike kills this map you're just playing to blow each other up the devs also stated that the bandit rifle plays out very well on chasm and from what we saw from the gameplay i would agree with that now for all you forge people out there this is some really great news i know you guys have been only being able to utilize blank canvases when it comes to editing but sometimes you can do some really cool stuff on these developer made maps and well with season three on day one you'll be able to do just that with the new maps as well as the previously shipped maps for arena and btb and 343 does clarify that any maps that are coming in in the future will also be able to be edited on forge and apparently with these three new maps coming in with season three it looks like there will be some easter eggs tied to them as well so I'll be making some videos talking about how to find those for sure. Let's talk about Escalation Slayer. Well, at least 343 did with some more details. I tried covering the best I could through the gameplay that we got over the HCS weekend. From what we saw, it was a team-based version of Escalation Slayer from the Master Chief Collection, which is effectively a gun game from Call of Duty, Counter-Strike, and stuff like that. Now in the team-based version, it looks like it took about five kills before your team could actually get to the next level. There are currently 11 levels set for Escalation Slayer, and they actually provided all the details when it comes to what those levels are going to be. And here's the list of all the different tiers guys if you want to see what exactly what they are just pause the video right here but all of these are basically just kind of fun combinations of primary secondary weapons along with a bit of equipment that would help spice things up a little bit ultimately ending with the oddball shroud screen combo which we saw within the gameplay that was over the weekend and it looks like a ton of fun and 343 does say that there will be two versions of escalation slayer a team version as well as a free-for-all version but wait there's more a btb version of escalation slayer is currently in the works as well as a super version so you get a chance to play around with all the special weapon variants that came with the campaign we just saw some information drop about the narrative event coming in for season three that's gonna be coming day one and it's the event is gonna be called mindfall which again seems to kind of play in what we saw with the cutscenes, kind of going inside the mind of din being corrupted by eratus this will be the first of two narrative events that we'll have this season very similar to have with season two i'm sure that gap will be shortened quite a bit so this event will take place from march 7th to the 21st the mindfall narrative event delivers a free 10 tier event pass containing a variety of cosmetics to outfit your new mirage as the sbi core along with new cinematics. Again, my biggest hope is that these narrative events will actually have some form of a narrative tied to them rather than just like the last narrative event, which was just, I'm a Spartan, you're a Spartan, this is my armor, let's go play multiplayer. From the little bit that we've seen of the Cinemax coming in with season three's narrative event, it's instantly going to be way better than anything we've had previously. This story with Dan and his mind being corrupted by Aratus sounds far, far more interesting than whatever they try to pull off at the end of season two with that narrative event. And if there are any significant lore implications with this upcoming story, as these narrative events are going to be the only form of content we're going to get when it comes to storytelling within Halo Infinite for quite some time, according to the recent layoffs that the campaign team from 343 has basically been completely laid off. So that's pretty much on halt. 343 recently changed the skill-based matchmaking when it comes to Halo Infinite. If you guys want to know more about it, 
Well, check out this video right here. Thank you very much for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.